In this video, we're going to review the process for um, physicians and medical assistants to verify if formulary checking has been performed, uh, to do the eligibility checking on the fly if they need to, and also to be able to prescribe medications based on formulary choices. This is going to be a combination of some screenshots as well as some live video because some of this checking has to be done on live patients and I have to blur out their information because it's protected health information. To start, this is a screenshot of the treatment screen where I'm going to prescribe a medication. In this case, I'm going to prescribe amoxicillin, um, and when I do so, this column comes up. These question marks in the white circle mean that formulary checking has not been done. Um, if you see this and you go ahead, you can still prescribe it. It won't stop you in any way, but if you do, you will not get credit. Uh, for e-prescribing and meaningful use because e-prescribing requires both formulary checking and then e-prescription. If you see this, then you should pause for a moment and instead look for this button here, Rx Eligibility. If you see this Rx Eligibility button and the question marks, you ought to run the eligibility checking. To do so, you click the button and this screen will come up. This is part of it. Again, there's usually going to be demographics listed here. I have grayed them out to protect confidentiality. The key is you want to click this button to check Rx eligibility. When you do so, this information will show up. This is the name of the plan from the insurance company or the pharmacy benefits company. Uh, when I click on this, then it's going to populate the information down here for the specific patient. Doing so will bring the information here. Again, I have blurred most of this out because it's protected information, but normally you're going to see the name, the plan number, benefits, etc. As long as I've clicked in here in this row, then I can choose Set Formulary, and that will select this checked formulary for the patient. Usually when you check Set Formulary, the screen will close automatically. If it didn't, then click Close. Now we'll go back to eClinicalWorks, and now I'm back to the treatment window, and now I want to prescribe the amoxicillin, and we'll see what happens. As I prescribe amoxicillin and click on it, I can now see that the column has changed to green, so I can see that amoxicillin is a preferred medication, which makes sense because it's generic and very inexpensive. The green smiley face means that this is preferred. Sometimes you'll see this yellow, somewhat smiley, somewhat frowny face. This means that it is on formulary, but it may not be preferred, or at least they're going to have a higher copay. So you can keep this in mind when you're prescribing. Notice another example. I'm going to prescribe now Augmentin. Augmentin has been generic for a number of years, but notice that in most cases, the brand name Augmentin gets this orange. This is not preferred. You don't want to go prescribing this. Now, I realize that most pharmacies will automatically substitute it for the generic, and they'll still get the lowest copay. But to be careful, notice that down below, eClinicWorks also gives you an option for the generic option here as well. If I click on it, it will take me straight to the generic Augmentin, and now I can be assured that the patient is going to get the generic, and they'll get the lowest copay. To give another example, Let's go to Lipitor. Lipitor is generic, but here I've searched for it by brand name, and you can see again that this is non-formulary. This is not preferred, and it's going to cost them more. Instead, I could either click on the atorvastatin here, or I could simply search for atorvastatin, its generic name, and now I can get the green. Again, notice there's a powder form of this, uh, which is not preferred. I'm not sure when you'd ever use that one. Similarly, let's try another one. We'll do Advir, an expensive medication. Here you can see Advir is non-preferred uh, as well. Uh, so you might try something different instead, perhaps Flovent. And you see that Flovent is non-preferred as well. So I'm going to try QVAR. I see that QVAR is preferred. So again, you can prescribe any of these, no matter what the insurance formulary status is, but it at least gives you some guidance so that if there's an appropriate medication that's preferred, you can save your patient some money. If you need to prescribe the non-preferred for clinical reasons, it's not going to stop you from doing it. As long as the formulary checking is done and you e-prescribe it, you will get credit with meaningful use. Um, meaningful use doesn't take into account the formulary status. They just take into account that formulary checking was done. Hopefully this has been helpful for you, um, which will help you with your meaningful use numbers and will hopefully help your patients get uh, the best pricing on their medications. Thanks.